today we have a time of announcements, so um, I have a few and then I'll invite, um, I'll open up the floor for any that we have. Today after church um, is our Easter egg hunt, so during church our youth are going to be filling and hiding those eggs outside for us, and then we'll um, have that after church. So we'll go into the fellowship hall, take just a minute, I'll make sure we're ready, and then we'll, we'll head out from there. I do want to um, just kind of really let you know of our Holy Week schedule, so it's in your, your news from the pews, so make sure you, you have this. Uh, this Friday, we will have a Good Friday service at 7 o'clock here um, in, in the sanctuary. I'm, I'm looking for a couple people who would be willing to read. I have a few, but would be interested in a few more. So if you're interested in reading a short little um, scripture or saying, uh, please let me know. And then on Sunday, we have our sunrise service at 7 a.m. out at Walnut Hill. So please come and, and join us. We'll have um, the bells will be out there and we'll play a song. We'll have some, some hymns and rejoicing. And we'll just get to experience the risen, uh, our Savior rising from a cemetery as, as the sun is coming up. Then at 9 o'clock, we are going to have our Easter breakfast here. So please um, come and join together in a time of fellowship where we can rejoice and praise together at 9 o'clock on Sunday. And then 10 o'clock will be our normal Sunday service. So please come, invite your friends, invite your family, invite whoever. Um, let us share with others the joy that we are going to experience and allow them to experience the same joy of Jesus Christ. We do have um, youth group today after church, so we'll have youth group, and then we'll have um, confirmation after that, and we'll be done at 1.30. One more thing. Um, we are beginning to look at graduation Sunday in May, and so if you know of a graduate either going... Um, graduating um, from eighth grade and going into ninth grade, graduating from high school, or anyone graduating from college, or um, any upper education, please send me an email or let me know so that we can begin um, to plan that service. Those are the announcements I have. Um, do we have any other announcements? Good morning. I've got a couple. Um, first, a follow-up on the breakfast for next Sunday. If you signed up to bring breakfast casserole, either bring it freshly out of the oven a little before 9, or you can bring it earlier and I'll bake it, because um, I'm going to come early right after sunrise to get stuff ready for breakfast. And so if you guys will just have your stuff here, we'll get it all put out. And then also this Thursday evening is Topeka North Outreach Operation Backpack. We'll be filling bags starting at 6 o'clock at Indian Creek. If you can come join us, the more the merrier. Thanks. Thank you. I see Kimberlyn's got one. Talon will turn nine years old on Thursday. Happy birthday, Talon. <laughs> Uh, I would like to thank everyone that sent cards or called or anything uh, at Stan's passing and those that came to the funeral as well. It was really nice. Yes, I know that was a little quiet, at least for me, so I'm just going to make sure. It's, Dixie's just saying thank you to everyone who sent cards and came to, to stay in service. Uh, it meant a lot. Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, I would invite us to, to join together in our unison prayer. Holy Lord, we welcome you in with praise and loud hosannas this morning. We welcome you in as our Savior and our Messiah. We know that you are our guidepost and cornerstone, yet we are not far from distancing ourselves from you and shouting, crucify him. We confess, Lord, that even now we deny our teachings and love, so we pray for your forgiveness. Forgive us, O Lord, forgive us. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. brings us into a time of sharing our joys and concerns with one another. Um, I would lift up prayers for um, my dad, Chuck. He had surgery this past week on his shoulder from a car accident he had at the end of 
um, December. So just prayers for recovery and, and healing for him. Do we have other joys or concerns this morning? Um, we appreciate all the folks that have called or asked or sent cards about how Jane's doing. Uh, she's doing better than she was last Sunday morning at this time, but she's still not 100% up and running around. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that update and continued prayers for Jane. And then we have some over here. Uh, please remember Jan Lowry and her son who was diagnosed with stage four um, oral cancer, uh, mouth cancer this past week. And so he's kind of got a tough road ahead of him. He's in Manhattan. I'd like to say that um, we have a new great grandbaby. Uh, it wasn't due for two months, but he had uh, other thoughts, and so he came early. <laughs> He's tiny. Yeah. Um, four pounds and one ounce. His name is uh, Wyatt Lee. Yes, joy for for Wyatt's coming into this world, and we and we pray that um, Wyatt is healthy and has a, has a good first. Um, few months especially of life and continued on. Do we have any other joys and concerns this morning? If not, then I would invite you to join me in a time of prayer. Holy and gracious Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time to gather together and to remember that you have entered our lives and you have gestured your way in to this world. We give praise, praise and we shout, Hosanna, loud Hosanna at the top of our lungs as we praise you. We are reminded this day, though, that, that Hosanna's is not where our crying out ends. As we continue through this week, we will be reminded of, of the ways that our, we turn towards betrayal and where we will yell, crucify him by the end of the week. We pray for your forgiveness with us, O oh Lord, that we know that even though we believe in, the, in our Savior and we, re we welcome him in, we sometimes forget and, and change our paths, and we find ways to turn our, ourselves away from Jesus. We just pray for your forgiveness and that this week you allow us to experience your great love and your great presence in a new way, in a deeper way, as we encounter this holy week. We pray this, and we pray the prayer that Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to remain seated and join in our next hymn, Lord of the Dance, number 261 in the hymnal, verses 1 and 2.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John in the 11th chapter, verses 33 through 45. Please rise in body or spirit for reading of the gospel. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved even to death, remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, my father, is it, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, so could you not stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Now the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. Look, my betrayer is at hand. The betrayal and arrest of Jesus. While he was still speaking, Judah, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus, with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will die by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a rebel? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all of this, has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all of the disciples deserted him and fled. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's word. Amen. Please remain standing as we join together in singing Lord of the Dance, number 261, verses 3 and 4.
may be seated. I also want to invite now our children to head off to Sunday school. Today is the day in the Christian year when we journey through an entire week. Today is the day when we remember Christ's entrance into Jerusalem. Today is the day when we remember Christ's last meal with his disciples. Today is the day we remember Jesus' betrayal. Today is the day we remember Jesus' death and journey to the cross. Today is the day we embark on a whirlwind of emotions that seem to give us whiplash. Day one. This is the day Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey. We began our service by receiving Jesus into this space and remembering his reception into Jerusalem. A joyous parade with shouting and tears and the laying of palm branches before him, preparing a path for Jesus as he enters the city. We also in our service ushered in the light of Christ to come in to be with us in this space on this day. This is the day when Jesus entered the city where God resides in the temple. This would have been a sign for some of the Jews that this may in fact be the Messiah that we have been waiting for. A Messiah who would enter Jerusalem and take it back from the Romans and install the power back to the Jews. Here in this action there is hope that this is the day that will fulfill the prophecies that the Messiah will overturn the tyrant powers and establish a long-awaited peace. And what the first thing Jesus did this day, according to Matthew, is he entered the the temple, he overturned the tables, cleansing it and reinstating it as the house of the Lord, a house of prayer. Day two. This is the day Jesus spends time preaching and teaching and answering the questions of the Pharisees. It is on the second day that Jesus spends time preparing us for what is to come. We get some of the great teachings of Jesus, such as that of the greatest commandment. When Jesus has asked, trying to be tricked into to saying, what is the greatest commandment and putting a commandment above one and all? Jesus responds, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourselves. On these two hang all the laws and the prophets. Jesus is taking some of his fleeting time to make sure that his ministry is summed up in the meaning of all of the laws. In these two simple things, to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus was asked and answered many questions, and it was here when things began to turn. I mentioned that Jesus was supposed to be the Messiah who would come and overthrow the Roman government and instate a way of peace and rule for the Jews. But when he was asked, that when Jesus was asked about paying taxes to Rome, He asks for a denarii and says, See, Caesar's face is on this coin. Pay to Caesar what is Caesar. Now, if this was the Messiah, shouldn't he have said, No need to worry about this. This will all be over soon. This begins to make people question if what they have celebrated the day before with the praises of the entrance of the Messiah was true or not. This is the day people began to question. Day three. This is the day a plan was devised to have Jesus killed. Matthew tells us that first on this day, the chief priests and the elders came together and created a plan to take Jesus in secret and have him killed. To do this before the festival of the unleavened bread as to not cause a riot in the city which so many people had come to to be a part of the Passover. While this was happening, Jesus was just outside of town and he was anointed by a woman with a jar of alabaster oil. 
The disciples question what this woman is doing, that this jar of oil could have been sold for money and used to help feed the poor. But Jesus defends her and says, what this woman is doing is anointing me for death and preparing for what comes next in this journey. This anointment really begins the process of our time towards the cross. It was later in this day that Judas would go to the chief priests and say, what can I do to help in betraying Jesus? And they, off, they pay him 30 pieces of silver, and he begins to devise a plan to give Jesus up to the empire. Day four, this is the day Jesus spends his last moments with his disciples. With the Feast of the Unleavened Bread approaching Passover, it's time to begin preparing for the Passover meal, which will begin that night. A long meal recounting the history of the Israelite people from slavery in Egypt to the Passover lamb to Moses leading the exodus out of Egypt to finding a new home in the promised land. This is one of the holiest days of the Jewish year. It is a time that all Jews, Jesus and his disciples included, would take time to celebrate and remember. It is during this annual meal that Jesus would take normal elements of bread and wine and celebrate the first communion at the Last Supper with his disciples. It would be during this meal that Jesus would tell his disciples that one of you sitting here will betray me. All of them, of course, saying, not I, Lord. And Peter continuing to say this, but then Jesus predicts that Peter will deny him three times before the cock crows in the morning. After sharing this meal and singing praise to God, he took with him three of his disciples to pray in the garden. To pray for God's power and peace and to pray for God's will to be done. While doing this, the disciples are, are not sure what's happening and they have no, no, uh, no part in this besides falling asleep at a tree while Jesus is out praying in agony. It is here that Judas will show up Give Jesus a hug, call him teacher, and give him a kiss on the cheek. A kiss of betrayal that will invite the, the crowds to come and grab him and lead him to the courts. It is this night he will have his first trial. It is this night when he will be put back and forth from Jewish law to Roman law. And this is the day that Peter will deny Jesus three times before the cock crows. Day five. This is the day God died. The trials continued and went before Pilate, and Pilate gave into the crowd who was shouting, Crucify him! and sentences Jesus to death. After being condemned of to death for no crime at all, Jesus is whipped and beaten and mocked and crowned with thorns. He is beaten and bled. After this, Jesus would carry his cross from town to the place of the skull called Golgotha, where he would be crucified between two bandits, one who would mock him and one who sought forgiveness. This is the day Jesus would breathe his last. This is the day the earth was broken and all hope seemed to be locked in the tomb where Jesus' body was laid. It is this week that we remember today on Palm Passion Sunday, this last week of Jesus' life where we journey from Hosanna to the glory to the Lord, to crucify him in under an hour of our time here. This is the day that shows humanity in the last week of Christ's life. 
It is a day to remember that we are sinners in need of a Savior. People who can witness to the glory of the Lord on one day and completely reject it the next. This is the day for us to be reminded of our tendency still 2,000 years later to do just as Peter did and deny Jesus when we are put under pressure. To begin to think of ourselves and our own worth rather than of God's. We are often like the God, disciples in the garden with Jesus and we miss what God is really doing. We miss what Jesus is really saying to us. Instead, we are distracted by earthly things, too tired to respond to the needs that Jesus is placing before us. Our Lenten journey has built up to this day when we see the tolls of our sin, not only on us, but on the world. When we are unsure of what comes next and if anything comes next at all. When we even choose, as close followers of Jesus, choose to turn our backs on the Messiah, the Lord of Lord, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us. This is the day. Amen. We come now to share in a time of, of offering where we get to receive and give of our gifts back to Jesus, back to God, and to do God's will in this world. To hopefully be a place where we don't turn our heads and be caught away in our tiredness, but we get to proclaim and do the mission which God has set before us. I want to invite now our ushers to come forward and receive our tithes and offerings. Gracious Lord, we lift up to you today these gifts, these of our first offering for you to bless, for you to use them to allow us to not be caught up in, in the ways of the world, but to be uh, joyed and fulfilled in your kingdom. Use these gifts to allow us to spread your joy and your love in this world. It is in your holy and gracious name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We, we heard how it was earlier in this week on day four that Jesus shared a last meal with his disciples. He gathered in, in the upper room and spent time going over the Passover meal, taking the, the many different steps, reading the passages, spending time with his disciples in this last, these last few hours of his life. 
to share in remembrance of what God has done and what God is continuing to do in the world. As the supper went on and as Jesus became closer to the time he took of these elements and created them a new meaning. A new meaning which we celebrate today as we remember Christ's sacrifice for us, as we remember where Christ is and what Christ is doing. We are all invited to to Christ's table, all of us sinners alike. Please come. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit from the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave us grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When we turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us him in your crowning gift. Emptying himself that your joy might be full, he fed the hungry, he healed the sick, ate with scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery and sin to death, and made with us the new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and gave his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering to us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in vinyl victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We are reminded that as Jesus took the bread and broke it, he gave it to all people and said, Take And eat. This is my body. Likewise, he took the cup, giving thanks, pouring it out, and asking us to drink of this in remembrance of Christ Jesus every time we can. I want to invite our um, communion helpers to come forward. Please come, the table has been set.
Let us pray. Holy and gracious Lord, we come before you today remembering ever so real your last meal with your disciples. The time when you sat and you ate with Peter, you ate with Judas, you ate with all your disciples who would, who would turn away and betray you the next day. We just pray for this holy meal to fulfill us, to call us to be your disciples, to not turn away, but to stand by your side and to be fulfilled in these simple elements of bread and wine. We pray this all in your name. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able and join in our closing hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This? Number 292 in the hymnal. I just want to invite you again to join us on Friday at 7 o'clock for our Good Friday service as we will spend some more time being in the presence of the last moments of Jesus' life, remembering the crucifixion and being able to experience the, the great sorrow before the great relief that we find on Easter. Please come and join us on Friday, and please come and join us on Sunday and invite your friends and your family and whoever you see to come and, and worship with us. Feel free to take your palms um, as you leave today, and then our um, Easter egg hunt, we'll go ahead and meet in the fellowship hall, get some snacks, mingle a little bit, and then we'll start that in just a few minutes. As we go forth today, allow us to be reminded that this is the day. This is the day that we remember what Christ has done for us. That Christ has entered into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, has shared a meal with his disciples, has been betrayed and died. That it is this is the day that we remember our journey and our call as Christ's followers. The service has ended. You may go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>